The Seattle Mariners obviously needed to make a move for another bat at the trade deadline, but they didn't. And today, on Wednesday, here at 4.30 p.m., we can see after the Mariners just lost to the Boston Red Sox 3-2 in the 10th inning, how valuable another bat would have been. Now, obviously, there are some other things to pay attention to here. One, there is no Julio Rodriguez. There is no J.P. Crawford. Victor Robles was out of the game today, too, which was also our best hitter on the entire team. So you could see, I could tell from the beginning of the game how valuable he was just having early up in that lineup to make things happen. He's always making things happen. Obviously, Jorge Polanco, who's been one of the hottest batters on the team, also left the game early. Gregory Santos came in relief pitching and left the game early. He got hurt on the mound. Um, Dominic Canzones also on the IL. There's a lot of pieces missing. And I'm obviously understanding of all that. But that does not excuse the fact that we could have traded a top prospect and gone and got somebody. Obviously, the Mariners and everybody, actually, I think was it the, the entire MLB, there was not a single top 100 prospect sent out, um, which is pretty crazy to think. And, you know, the Mariners didn't let go of anybody in their top 10. And the, their biggest trade move was Jonathan Classe. And we've, we've seen him not be that great in the major leagues. But as much as I love to see Ty Pete or Harry Ford or whoever it may be still be on the Mariners, you know, pipeline. It would have been okay in a season like this where the AL West is having its most vulnerable season in a long time. It would have been a good opportunity to make a move and send out a young guy, especially when you're stuck with guys like Mitch Garver, guys like, you know, Dylan Moore, who's actually been decent. He had, he was been awful for a while until this series. He's been a lot better. And I'm not saying somebody like Dylan Moore needs to be off the roster. There's other guys, two guys with the first name, Mitch, Mitch Hanniger and Mitch Garver that might not be allowed to be on this roster anymore. But in general, it's, you know, not who you want to roll with every day, especially knowing you have these injuries. I mean, we went out of the deadline knowing that Robles is, sounds like he's been having a hip issue. I don't think it just happened yesterday because they're saying it's something he's has, he has to work through. They said that right after the game. It's not like it was something brand new. Polanco, we know, has been dealing with something in his knee. Um, you know Julio's on the IL. You know J.P. Crawford broke that bone in his pinky or thumb, whatever it was. I think it was pinky. Um, you know Canzones are we, – we know our situation. It's not like this all happened today. Yeah, Polanco left early today and Robles yes, yesterday got a little banged up. But the rest of the guys, we knew the situation. And yes, Justin Turner was a nice pickup. We've seen him already get a couple hits in big moments. He puts the ball in play. But he's a 39-year-old rental that is just here to fill in some spots. Fill in for first base because we got rid of Ty France. Um, and obviously, they don't trust Tyler Locklear yet. It's a fill-in. Randy Rosarina was an amazing pickup. Um, obviously he was having a little bit of a down year, but he's been hot as of late. If you look at his last 30, he's like a 290 or 280 something, 288 hitter with multiple home runs. So I'm not saying it was an awful move, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't something that's going to change the entire lineup. It's going to change a spot in the lineup. And if you have a healthy Julio and Victor Robles playing the way he is and Randy Rizarina in the, in the outfield, yes, it's good, but we're still missing a lot of pieces. We still don't have a first baseman. We still don't have a legitimate DH. Now, you you could make the argument that they're okay with Rojas at third. We're okay with that outfield I mentioned. J.P. Crawford's back. You're okay with that. Polanco, you're okay with that the way he's been playing recently. But there is no DH that you can trust on a daily basis or a first baseman you can trust on a daily basis. And when you have that situation, on top of the injuries, you should have traded for another bat. Now, I'm going to give you some... It's, it's optimistic criticism because we're in first place by half a game right now. We'll see if the Pirates sweep the Astros and keep us in first. We know that our guys are coming back and it could be better. And it's the first time the OS is vulnerable. But like I keep saying, you should have found a way to improve the roster even more than you did because you knew there was the possibility of these injuries being around and guys like Mitch Garver being up there who was today 0 for 5 and left eight runners on base, uh, like eight left on base. 
by Mitch Garver in an 0-5 day. You know that situation's there. You know you're not going to put, I don't know, Justin Turner at an everyday DH. You're probably playing him at first for now because you, you sent down Locklear and what it is what it is. But the thing with Garver right now, too, is Sebi, uh, Sebi Zavala is gone. You know that you need a backup catcher. So I don't know what you're supposed to do with the Garver situation. Or just do not play him unless it's a backup catcher day. Or do something unrealistic. And I know it's not going to happen. Bring up Harry Ford and have him freaking DH and play catcher on backup days. I don't know. Do something if you're not going to make a trade. Because this is not acceptable. Now, as I mentioned before, my biggest take here is we cannot be in a situation where we have Mitch Garver and Mitch Hanniger in this lineup every day. Or be pinch hitting players for you know i'm putting in mitch haneker and obviously there was a lot of questionable moments by scott service he should have walked devers in the 10th it was an open base that's frustrating but the mariners also if we go back to the batting situation the mariners on a wild pitch in the 10th inning it got cal raleigh two-third we had no outs runner on third and couldn't bring in a run not a sack bunt that brings in a runner or you know nothing not a not a good enough thing for a sack fly. Nothing. Runner on third. No outs. And we got zero runs and then lost on the first batter in the bottom of the 10th. But I put out on Twitter, I love doing this, uh, how we're feeling today about the Mariners. Um, and I want to go through, I mean, right now there's 32 replies. Um, but here's some of the responses. See a Garver, which we agree with. Mostly need our starter back. Uh, starters really shows how valuable Robles was. And that's something I keep mentioning. We got to bring back JP Crawford and Julio and hopefully Garver is healthy and hopefully Polanco's not too hurt and things will be a little better. Watching this offense is so painful, especially runners in scoring position. We need Julio and JP back ASAP. Another thing, maybe Mike Zanino could come out of retirement. They can release Garver, just eat 24 million at as a sunk cost. I think a common theme here obviously is Mitch Garver. Um, one for 14 with runners in scoring positions. You need to not go one in 14, which is obviously the biggest issue here is why they needed to find another bat at the deadline. I think the biggest thing here is trade two guys, three guys from the farm and go find a way. Maybe they weren't trading them, right? It looks it sounds like Diaz was not leaving from Tampa Bay. Maybe Guerrero was not leaving from Toronto, but fucking find a way because at the end of the day, this is not enough. And another team will take the deal if you do end up offering enough. It might not have been enough what we offered, but if you do give enough, they might say yes. Um, a lot of people are just negative about this. Julio, JP, and Robles, that would have made the difference. So they think we're fine. But the other half is we are always one bat short, frustrated as ever. Um, I'm about done with this shit. It makes me stressed. No J-Rod and Robles. They need to return. This is, you know, mostly the answers are injuries are killing us and Garver's killing us. And I think that is the main two things that I'm seeing from everyone's opinions. And I have to agree. So at the end of the day, we need to find a replacement for Garver, Garver or just bring back Tyler Locklear and let him, I don't know, we, we need a backup catcher, but let him DH, um, bring up a cat do roster moves every week when Cal needs a day off or bring up Harry Ford. I know it's not going to happen. It's just like a, that's one of those unrealistic just things you say, but you never know. Uh, at the end of the day, we got to pray for these injuries to lessen up fast and find a replacement for Mitch Garver. Uh, frustrating that we didn't get another bat at the deadline, a frustrating, very frustrating loss in the 10th inning. Don't pitch to Devers there and you have to score. We have a runner on third and no outs. I'm Sammy on tap. You can find my page. I talk a lot of Seahawks, NFL, and do shorts about every sport. Um, and you can find us anywhere. Just like and subscribe if you love the Mariners or Seahawks. We talk all Seattle sports on this channel. And we'll be back next time. And Mariners, please figure it out. My goodness.